welcome to Hong Kong Network where you get updates of things happening around you. I appreciate every one of you that have subscribed to this channel. And if you have not subscribed, I say thank you very much because I know that at the end of this news, you are going to subscribe. And I want you to press the red button and also the bell icon so that you'll be notified anytime we publish any news. Thank you very much once again. OPC will not allow Yoruba land become den of criminals. Ushibote. Kidnappers and Esme abducting people have been warned to keep away from the Southwest or risk incurring the wrath of the Odudua People's Congress, OPC. Given the warning in an interview is the president of OPC, Are Prince Ushibote, who said the group will resist any attempt not only to make Yoruba land unsafe but also to turn it into den of criminals. Ushibote, who succeeded late Frederick, late Dr. Frederick Fashewu, as OPC leader also spoke on other national issues. What is your reaction to the present state of insecurity in the country, especially the Southwest, where suspected Esme and bandits have been kidnapping people? As an organization, OPC is worried about the insecurity challenge, and our hope is that the various security agencies will be able to quickly nip in the board the nefarious activities of bad elements behind these vices. As the leader of OPC, I'm calling on Yoruba and other people living in the Southwest not to panic. OPC is up to the task and we are fully prepared to defend the Yoruba land from an external aggressors. I'm giving the people of the Southwest the assurance that they should not panic. We are already doing our own work. We are ready to bear our fangs if provoked. Don't forget that the primary objective of setting up the OPC as an organization is to defend and promote Yoruba interests, and we are ready at all times to do that. Enough is enough. These criminals should keep off Yoruba land or risk incurring the wrath of OPC. A warning to all these criminal elements is that they should stay away from Yoruba land. OPC under my watch will not allow Yoruba land to be turned into a den of criminals. Never. It will never happen. They should not play with fire. OPC can't only that OPC can't only back, but can also bite. We will not trigger or provoke any crisis, but any group or individual that attempts to disrupt peace in Yoruba land will have himself to blame. Everybody knows what OPC can do, but we are for peace and unity of Nigeria. We don't want to be provoked, and that is why I'm using this medium to appeal to the federal government to take urgent steps to put adequate security measures in place to secure lives and properties of all Nigerians. Why has your voice not been heard all this while on some of these burning national issues? I have not been speaking out since I took over leadership of OPC after the death of our founder, Dr. Frederick Fashion, because I have been undertaking reforms in OPC with a view of sanitizing the organization because and because on assuming leadership of the organization, I discovered that some unscrupulous elements have been mingled with the organization and we needed to flush them out. Those are the bad elements that are giving OPC bad name. OPC as an organization has good ideas and visions with the primary objective of promoting Yoruba interests, values and culture. OPC was set up during the military era to fight injustice against the Yoruba race, especially after the announcement of June 12, 1993 presidential election. At the time of OPC was set up, former President General Lushegun Obasanjo was being held in jail by the Abacha mili military junta. Part of the reasons OPC was set up was, the, was to fight the military junta that annulled the June 12 election and also to ensure a return of democracy and luckily we were able to achieve those objectives as democracy was restored to the country in 1999. I'm determined to reform OPC because the impression some people have is that OPC is all about hooliganism and thuggery, but this is a wrong view of the group. Our objective as I have said earlier is to promote Yoruba culture and practices. OPC members are not to be used as thugs or to unleash violence on people. I'm rebranding OPC, and this I'm doing quietly, and this is why I have not been too loud in what I have been doing since assuming office as OPC leader. Moreover, I don't believe in speaking too much. I believe in taking action rather than talking every time. Then, again, we must try to find out whether those talking every time 
have genuine intention or not, or whether they are doing so to attract attention with a view of getting something in return or not. To tackle insecurity in the Southwest, some Nigerians are suggesting the idea of a collaboration with between police and the OPC, like it was done before. What's your take on that? And he said, it is a good idea. When Alaji Musliu Smith was the inspector, inspector general of police, he initially expressed reservations about OPC activities, but I later got an appointment with him and I used the opportunity to explain to him in detail what OPC stands for. I told him that what people are telling him about OPC is not true. Then a lot of people were saying negative things about OPC. I took time to explain to Smith about the vision of OPC and what the group stands for. My interactions with Smith led to collaboration between OPC and the police, especially in the area of combating and tackling crime. His successor, Alaji Tafa Adebayo Balogun, sustained the relationship and during his time, there was also collaboration between the police and OPC to enhance security of lives and properties, especially in the southwest. Balogun is a man that should be appreciated during his tenure. Not only Nigeria was effectively policed and secured, but the southwest in particular enjoyed peace and, and security. Safa Balogun had zero tolerance for crime and criminals and it was during his time that Operation Fire for Fire was introduced. He is a man that should be appreciated. In this history of OPC, Safa Balogun can't be forgotten for how he ensured that the police and OPC worked in harmony to protect lives and properties of Nigerians, especially in the Southwest. It is a pity and very unfortunate that Safa Balogun is not being appreciated the way Nigerians ought to appreciate him over his achievements in the area of security. Like it was done during Smith and Balogun's era, we can also do it now. OPC is ready to collaborate and work with the police and other security agencies to tackle the problem of insecurity in the country if we are invited. How would you assess President Muhammad Buhari's administration? He said, there is no individual that is 100% perfect. As a leader, the president, I believe, has been trying his best to move the nation forward. He has been trying to sanitize this country through his fight against corruption. Corruption has caused a lot of havoc in the country. It has become a hydra-headed monster that we need to tame. We should all join hands to fight corruption if we want Nigeria to attain greatness. Some Nigerians recently can vast death penalty as punishment for corruption. What's your take on that? And he said, I'm in support of it. Death penalty is okay for corruption. Through corruption and corrupt practices, looters are destroying the nation. They are also killing Nigerians. By the time a few corrupt people are hanged or executed, or other would be other would be a looters we beat a retreat. I don't see anything wrong with execution of looters. Their execution will serve as a deterrent. If looters are executed, there will be sanity. Nigeria will not be first country to execute looters. In China, looters are executed. There are also other countries that do so. As a way of fighting corruption, some have suggested that the newly elected public officer, office holders should be made to swear by traditional gods like Ogun, Eshu, etc. That doing so, we help to stem or tackle corruption as many public office holders don't respect the Bible and the Quran, which are currently being used for swearing in ceremonies. What's your reaction? And he said, I fully support it. It is another effective way to tackle corruption. These traditional gods are agents of the supreme deity Yoruba called Olodumare. When you swear falsely on any of these gods, you are playing with fire because if you swear on them and when you get to public office and start stealing, you will incur the wrath of other traditional gods as calamities in various forms will start afflicting anybody that swears forcefully with them. And this is why our public office holders are afraid of them. But if these public officer, office holders have genuine intention to serve and not to loot, they should not be afraid or develop cold feet if they ask them to swear by traditional gods. What is your reaction of the declaration of June 12 as a democracy day? He says it is a welcome development. OPC as an organization was part of June 12 struggle. OPC came into being as part of other movements that emerged to fight the injustice of June 12 annulment. President Buhari should be commended for making the declaration. What are your expectations from President Buhari in the second term in office? He said it is only 
in Nigeria that I see citizens abuse leaders, even though you may disagree with his policies and program, you don't need to abuse Buhari as a leader. There are polite ways of or to express your disagreements with him without resorting to abuse. As for my expectation from him, he should fix the power sector. He promised to do this during his first term, but up to today, the problems besetting the sector are still there and we all know that power is the key to so many economic challenges facing the nation. If the power sector is fixed, there will be a boom in the economy. Then small-scale enterprises will also thrive and employment will be generated for many unemployed Nigerians. But Buhari also promised to tackle the problem of unresolved murders and assassinations. There are also many unresolved murders and assassinations. We need to unravel this. So Buhari should keep to his promise to let Nigerians know what happened in all these cases. During the second term, Buhari should also ensure that he puts in place people-oriented programs that will make life meaningful for Nigerians. He should also find ways to squarely address the problem of poverty. So the advice West governors, to the Southwest governors, what's your advice to them? My advice is not only for the Southwest governors, but all the newly elected leaders. They should know that they were elected to serve. They should therefore not be serving. They should not betray the electorate. They should know that public office is an avenue to serve and not platforms to lose. Uh, this is the end of the interview, you know, that was heard with this uh, Oshibose, the head of uh, OPC. And he has said a lot of things, you know, trying to make peace with people and to ensure and make sure that people are not panicked because of this uh, insecurity of 18. And he has really sent warning to all those uh, uh, criminals that want to really disturb the peace of the land, most especially South West. So, guys, I would like you guys to put down your comments you know, based on the interview that was heard with this Ushibose. Thank you very much. Bye.